a gentleman, Mark, in the middle there, and he, he needs some advice. Mark, what's your issue? Uh, so I went on a date a few months ago, and um, it went really well. And at the end of the date, uh, we were both kind of going back and forth on who should pay. So when I insisted I, that I pay, um, she took a lot of offense to that and told me that she could handle it. Right. So I was just wondering, you know, in today's world, is chivalry still alive, accepted, or uh, did I miss the memo? There is no absolute right and wrong. I was brought up by a mother who taught me, if you don't offer to pay and then pay, you're not being a gentleman, right? right? So that's the paradigm I grew up with, but that doesn't make it absolute and correct. What it does mean is if you like paying, you need to find someone who likes when you pay. All you need to know, and this is all anyone needs to know in life, let's stop worrying about why people are the way they are and go find someone who likes the way we are. Right? Yeah. I think you're a hell of a guy. He's handsome, too. Dash you. Let's see if we can help Morgan. I hope so. So my question is, how do I deflect difficult questions? So, for example, I was talking to this guy, and he asked me my political beliefs, and I did not know how to respond or deflect the answer. Mm. Hmm. So we actually have this text message chain right here. He said, do you have any strong political beliefs? Which, by the way, I understand. That's a bit of an odd question to send someone by text. We had right? him yet. It almost sounds like someone trying to feel out. He's got extreme beliefs, so this is, this is his way of seeing if you do too. And right. then when you went, I don't talk about politics and I don't really talk about it in person either, he's, yeah, me neither. I hate <laughs> politics. You asked the question, weirdo. Um, <laughs> um, but, but what I will say is this. Your message in, like, let's just pretend that was a normal question, but you didn't like it. The message you sent back is a little abrupt. There's something you could say that would say the same thing, but in slightly more of a playful way. Okay. So you could literally say, I wrote up a text for you that you could send. LOL, that's the equivalent of a text grenade. I've never really found <laughs> politics to be an easygoing conversation between strangers. Have you? So oh, now God. you're onto a different track. Right? He's right. so good. <laughs> One thing to remember in life is you never, ever have to answer the question you were asked. Right? If someone says you have strong beliefs about politics, you can say, no, but I have very strong beliefs about food. <laughs> and no, then start talking about... <laughs> yeah, right. We know someone does. <laughs> so then start talking about an amazing restaurant you went to last week. If someone says, how are you? You could be literal and say, I'm fine. Or you could say, oh, my God, I'm so great. I just saw the most amazing movie last night. Have you seen it? I say what I want to say. I take the direction in the direction... I, the conversation in the direction... The boss of I want to go. OK, Drive so you direct it. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I will say to all of you out there and all of those of you at home as well, in 2020, I really believe that finding love can be so simple. It just requires a couple of habits that you do that aren't the habits you do right now. There are three simple habits that I've literally put in a place for you in a free guide at three lovehabits.com. So if you go Three there... lovehabits.com. You'll go and get a guide that will literally help you find love in 2020 with three simple habits. Can you tell me during the break? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>